Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series and uh, in this video we're going to have a high level overview of the databases, developer tools, logging and monitoring and integration services within the catalogue. Okay so here I am in my catalogue at uh, in my IBM Cloud account at cloud.ibm.com and uh, just as always to get here I'll just click catalogue here. I've already put on the IBM filter so uh, the next thing I'm going to go and do is just uh, check the databases box. We're going to have a look at databases first. So you'll notice here there's actually 17 items in the in the database cat part of the catalog from IBM. So again, lots and lots of services here that are available. So first up, we have Cloudant, and Cloudant is a JSON or document uh, database. And uh, JSON database is really good for web, uh, mobile, IoT, serverless type applications where you don't want to have a fixed schema. So um, Cloudant's a really good uh, database example there. Then we have uh, these services here, which are the, in the databases four group. And uh, right now we've got five of those. So PostgreSQL, so this is obviously a, a service for PostgreSQL databases. Another one for, for Redis. Uh, so Redis, if you're not too sure, is a, uh, an in-memory um, sort of key uh, value store type database. Then we've got Elasticsearch, so this is uh, a good sort of full text search engine, uh, which uh, gives, which also has sort of the strengths of a JSON document database underneath it as well. Then we've got MongoDB, so you're probably familiar with MongoDB, and ETCD as well. So um, again, that's another key value store type database. So these all sit in the databases for um, family of databases. So these are all highly available and uh, they're actually created across what we call um, availability zones as well. We then have a number of Compose services, so these are actually provided by um, Compose, which again is another IBM company. So we have Compose Enterprise, so if you want to create, uh, so this allows you to actually create some uh, private uh, enterprise type databases, so you can basically create a private isolated cluster of servers and then choose which um, Compose Enterprise database you want to run on that. So rather than having a, a, a sort of a service running on public infrastructure, this allows you to create a service running on private infrastructure. Uh, and then we have um, a public uh, infrastructure Compose service. So Janus Graphs, this is a, a graph, graphing based database. Uh, MySQL, so probably all familiar with MySQL, so a relational database which is uh, very, very popular for use on the internet. Uh, we've got RethinkDB, so again, this is another uh, JSON or document-based um, uh, database type. Uh, SkylarDB, so this is a, uh, a wide column distributed type database, and that, uh, that pretty much wraps up the different Compose services. We've then got um, DB2, so DB2 is a, is a well-known and widely used IBM uh, SQL database, so this was this is formerly called DashDB, um, and uh, so this is all based on the DB2 engine. We've then got DB2 hosted, so again this is a, a private version of the DB2 database, so it's hosted on server infrastructure which is dedicated to you. Uh, we've then got DB2 warehouse, we mentioned this in the, uh, I think in the, the, uh, the storage um, part of these videos. Uh, so DB2 Warehouse is a, is a data warehousing application which is based on the DB2 engine. We've then got HyperProtect uh, database as a service for MongoDB and, and PostgreSQL. So basically what these are, are uh, they're, they're, so they're obviously implementations of MongoDB and PostgreSQL but they're deployments on highly secured um, server infrastructure. So if you need to run a database on infrastructure which is really, really secure and it has more security built into it than the other services, um, then these two services are really well worth looking at. And then we have Infomix. So uh, Infomix is another type of database. And um, again, uh, this is a, a service uh, dedicated for Infomix. So that's databases. So next up we have developer tools. So within our developer tools, we have, um, first of all, API Gateway. So API Gateway is a means for actually developing and sharing API. So these are sort of um, programmatic interfaces for applications that allows um, other applications to actually consume services within, within different applications. So if you're into your APIs, then API Gateway is a really good tool to go and have a look at. Uh, we then have availability monitoring. So again, this starts off our, I guess, our monitoring tools. 
So, uh, so, so availability monitoring is a, is a suite of tools which allows you to, to monitor the uptime of your applications and of your services. And there's ways and means in there to then actually alert you um, if services are down, for example. Next up, we have continuous delivery. And uh, this is a really um, good um, developer tool for actually um, taking um, code that you may have written and then putting it into pipelines and then actually uh, delivering that code into build and then into deployment through what we call a, de a continuous delivery pipeline. So this is all part of, um, of DevOps and, um, and, and uh, again, it's a very, very powerful tool. And you'd use that in, in um, uh, probably in collaboration with tool chains, which we'll uh, come on to down there in a moment. DB2 Warehouse pops up again. So we've already covered that once in this particular video. Uh, then we have uh, domain name registration or DNS. So if you have a domain that you actually need to uh, register, so for instance, something like jamesbelton.co.uk, uh, then you can actually do that through IBM Cloud. So you can go and register a domain, uh, pay for that domain through IBM Cloud, and then, then obviously use that within your account. We then have an, an email tool. Uh, this is actually powered by SendGrid. So if your applications need to um, send out um, email in some way, uh, then you can do that through the SendGrid application. Next up, we have a tool called Globalization Pipeline. And uh, this is a, a DevOps integrated application transaction uh, management service that uh, you can actually use to rapidly translate and actually release cloud and mobile applications to global customers. So if you've got, um, if you've, if you've got global customers and you need to have um, a pretty much a global um, uh, website or application, then you can use globalization pipeline to actually quickly translate um, your your applications and, and, uh, and websites uh, for that purpose. Now, next up, we have Schematics and Schematics is, is uh, actually quite an important service. It's fairly new as I'm recording this. It's a fairly new service to IBM Cloud. And this is basically enabling infrastructure as a code as code. So uh, so by that, you can you can write some code um, a lot of times in in uh, in Terraforms. So you can write code um, which actually can be uh, used by schematics to, to then build uh, an environment within IBM Cloud. So, so this is a very, very um, powerful um, service. And uh, again, if you want to write code to actually build infrastructure, then go and take a look at the schematic service. Next, we have SQL Query. And um, well, SQL Query kind of does what it says in the tin in the sense that uh, it is a service which allows you to query data um, using the uh, the structured query language or SQL language um, that is inherent in an awful lot of databases. Only it's got a bit of a twist. So with the SQL query, you don't actually have to create a database. And what it will actually do is it will allow you to hook into files, so CSV type files and other uh, file structures as well. Um, that are stored within our cloud object storage service and actually allow you to run SQL queries against it. So again, an incredibly powerful tool. Um, I guess you could use it for, um, for data analysis, among other things. Uh, but SQL Query, uh, a very, very powerful tool and uh, basically gives you uh, the ability to query your data without actually creating databases. And lastly, we have tool chains. So tool chains kind of goes hands in hand a little bit or quite often with continuous delivery. So tool train is actually a, a means to integrate uh, different tools that allow you to build, test, deploy applications uh, within, your, within your account uh, using DevOps practices. So again, if you want to go through the process of automatically uh, creating some code, uh, saving that code to like a GitHub repository, the tool chain will then have tools within it that are then able to take that code from the GitHub repository um, and then and then build that code into a into a release and then actually deploy it into your different environments. You do that via a tool chain. Okay, so let's go and have a look at logging and monitoring. So I have two tools for this. So first of all, we've got Cloud Activity Tracker with Log DNA. So this is a, a bunch of tools that allow you to actually search uh, for events that actually occur within your uh, within your, your account. And then you can use a, a product called LogDNA, which then gives you the ability to actually visualize um, what's going on with your account in terms of activity tracker. So if you need to uh, monitor activity, you need to do auditing uh, of activity within your account, then uh, Cloud Activity Tracker with LogDNA is a really powerful tool for doing that. 
And then we have log analysis with log DNA. So again, it's using a, a log DNA at the back end. But what this is doing is it's uh, providing log collection uh, from your various applications and then allows you to actually easily search those logs to find events, uh, to find errors, to see what's going on. And then using the log DNA, you can then define alerts and design views, which allow you to monitor applications more closely. So again, these are two really powerful um, services that we provide for doing, um, for, for doing basically activity tracking and log analysis within your account. Okay, so let's go on and take a look at our integration tools. So first of all, we have messages for RabbitMQ. So if you want to um, use messaging between applications to integrate, uh, messages for RabbitMQ is a really good uh, product for doing that. So basically this is a messaging broker. So it will take a message from, uh, from one application and then send and distribute and send it to another application. So that's messages for RabbitMQ. Next we have API Connect. So API Connect allows you to create um, enforce and run APIs within your applications. So again, this is a really good way to um, actually make your applications more available um, to other applications so they can be programmatically called um, via, via APIs. Next up, we have App Connect. Now, App Connect is a really cool tool. I had a look at this um, the other day. And uh, what this has in it is, is a whole bunch of, um, I guess, um, pre-created um, connectivity tools for, for different applications. So for example, if you want to um, easily connect your application up to Slack, uh, then there's a, there's a tool within App, App Connect that allows you to very, very quickly integrate Slack into your application. And similarly, there's things for Twitter, uh, things for a whole gamut of other services across IBM Cloud. So basically, if you want to connect one application to another application, take a look at App Connect because um, you know chances are there may well be a widget within there that allows you to do that very, very, very quickly. Next, we have event, screen, event streams, even not event screams, but event streams. Uh, and this is, a, a again, a messaging bus, uh, which is actually all open source and built with Apache Kafka. So next, we have Lyft CLI. And Lyft CLI makes it easy and quick to move um, large data sets from your on-premises uh, environment, so on-premises databases or other data sources into an IBM cloud um, environment. So it uses uh, ultra high speed data movement to the cloud because it's got um, something called IBM Asphera bed embedded into it. And that's a highly efficient data transport technology, uh, which gives you speeds which are uh, typically over 10 times faster than uh, traditional migration tools over the internet. So again, if you're migrating your data into IBM Cloud, uh, then I really do recommend that you go and have a look at this Lyft CLI service. And next we have MQ, and this uh, provides uh, enterprise grade messaging capabilities. So uh, point to point and publish subscribe type models. And that actually allows the flow of information in the form of messages again between applications. So that's the uh, that's the MQ service there. And lastly, we have Secure Gateway. So this service provides a quick and easy uh, and secure solution for uh, for connecting resources that are that are maybe on your premises or or in another sort of uh, protected environment uh, to cloud resources. So basically, you deploy a lightweight uh, installed Secure Gateway client, and then you establish a secure, persistent connection between your environment and the cloud. Um, through an outbound call through the through the uh, secure gateway and that's it for this video as always thank you very much for watching uh, if you want to be kept up to date with the latest uh, video releases then please subscribe to my channel uh, if you have any questions then obviously leave a comment but in the meantime thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time